Here we have a common stoichiometry problem involving the combustion of ethanol at 400 Kelvin. Now we're going to see that the temperature here is important mostly because both your ethanol and your water are going to be in the gas phase. And so I want to really emphasize a part of this question right here that's saying how many total gas moles are in your reaction system after six moles of ethanol and nine moles of oxygen react to 100% completion. This part of the question stem right here is telling you that the question is interested in not only the products, but because everything is in the gas phase, if you have a reactant in excess, you're gonna to wanna to include that as well. Like any good stoichiometry problem, Step one is going to be to balance the chemical reaction if necessary. And there are a variety of ways of approaching this, but what I like to do with combustion reactions is make sure my carbon is balanced first. And from there, it's just a matter of balancing the oxygen and the hydrogen. And that's gonna end up with a coefficient of a three in front of the oxygen and a three in front of the water. There is an understood one in front of the ethanol, but whenever you're writing balanced chemical reactions, you don't want to include that. You just want to know that it's definitely there. Step two is a very important step, and that's going to be to find the limiting reagent. And I have a very straightforward way of approaching that, and it begins with the amounts of the reactants that are provided in the question stem. And so I'm going to start off with my ethanol, that's C2H5OH. And I know in the question stem, I was provided with six moles of ethanol. And for every balanced chemical reaction, my recipe is one mole of ethanol. And that's just the coefficient on ethanol in that balanced chemical reaction above. And so I'm capable of running six reactions with that six mole of ethanol present in the question stem. You wanna see how these mole units cancel out and leave me with just reactions. I can do the same thing for oxygen, except in this case, I was provided with nine moles of oxygen in the question stem, and my recipe for each balanced chemical reaction is going to be three moles of oxygen per reaction. And that's gonna give me the ability to run three reactions. And once again, notice how these units of mole cancel out to leave me with just reaction. Now what this actually means is that my oxygen is going to limit the amount of reactions I can run and is therefore going to run out first. And so by definition, our oxygen is our limiting reagent. Now, it's gonna be incredibly important also to recognize that my ethanol is going to end up being in excess. What that means is we're not going to run through all of our ethanol in this experiment. Step three is gonna to be to solve for the output of this chemical reaction, which I like to say is just solving for the amount of products that I'm forming. The good news is we already did most of the work here. We determined that we can run three reactions with the given amount of oxygen and ethanol present. And so I'm gonna pick on carbon dioxide at first. And I'm gonna say we can run three reactions. And for each reaction, the coefficient on that carbon dioxide is two. So I'm gonna get two moles of carbon dioxide out. Therefore, my output in terms of carbon dioxide is gonna be six moles. I can do the same thing for the steam. I can run three reactions, and the coefficient there is going to be three moles. And so my output is going to be nine moles of H2O. Now, what we did here is great. It is, we solve for the moles of product. However, if you reported your answer as 15, you would be totally wrong because the question stem is asking for the total gas moles in the reaction system. 
And we did identify in step two that we're going to have a small amount of ethanol left over because it is the reagent in excess. And so step four is going to be our last step of these calculations, and that's going to be to solve for any amount of excess. And as you might believe, there is a pretty simple way of solving for the amount of excess that looks a lot like step three. So we know that our ethanol is in excess. You have six moles in the beginning. And throughout the course of these reactions, you are depleting those six moles to some capacity. And so we're running three reactions. And so for each reaction that I run, I'm depleting one mole of my ethanol. And so what's going to be left over is simply three moles of the ethanol. Now, some people don't quite see how that this fits together. And so I like to write this out a little bit more generically. So this six right here represents the moles I have initially. And I'm subtracting this term in parentheses, which represents the moles consumed. And that's all going to be equal to the moles in excess. And what I want you to see is that this term in parentheses, the moles consumed, actually looks identical to when we were solving for the products because it is a similar sort of game of ratios. But in this case, instead of being added to our reaction system like we did for the products, it's going to be subtracted away. So that's why we have this negative sign here. And so now we can actually solve for our final answer, which is going to be our six moles of CO2 plus our nine moles of that steam. And lastly, we're going to include the very important amount in excess, which is three moles of our ethanol. And that's going to give us a final answer equal to 18 moles of gas.